Uh, okay, thank you for clicking on the video. So today, this video is episode number three in my Nostalgia Corner series, and for the first time I'm going to talk about a video game instead of a movie. And that video game is going to be Sid Meier's Pirates. Alright, so, today's a little different. I'm talking about a video game, uh, whereas my last two Nostalgia Corner videos have been about movies. Uh, this is going to be about a video game, and it's Sid Meier's Pirates. And, uh, first off, I want to apologize. For some reason, my camera, I use a phone to record these, is having trouble uh, getting both of these things in frame right here. Uh, and staying in focus, and I don't know if that's because of the lighting or just the camera on my phone, so I do apologize if you can't really see this. Uh, when I do the editing, I don't know, maybe B-roll footage will pop in here so you can get a closer look. Um, but today I'm talking about Sid Meier's Pirates, and I've got two versions of that game uh, sitting in front of me. So I'm going to talk about this one on the left first, and then... Uh, well, you're my left, you're right. And then I'm going to talk about the Xbox version right here after that. So, I had mentioned in one of my previous videos, I can't remember which one, but my original very first gaming experience was on a Commodore 64. Um, not on like a handheld system like a Game Boy or the early at-home systems like an Atari or NES, Super NES, you know, nothing like that. While I ended up having those systems later on, in my later childhood and, you know, even into adulthood now with certain things, I didn't have that initially growing up. My, my very first gaming experience comes from the Commodore system that my dad had purchased back in the, like, mid to late 80s. So, this game, if you look here, and like I said, I may have to put B-roll footage in if it won't focus correctly. This is a Commodore 64 floppy disk of Pirates. And this is not the store-bought version. Uh, the store-bought would have come in a box with like a goldish bronze color uh, label that would go across the top with the fancy text and everything. And it had a bunch of accessories, you know, the manual and like uh, pirate maps and like booklets about the history of pirating and things like that. This one is essentially what amounts to a burned version of it. That's the closest thing I can compare it to. Uh, the Commodore 64 would let you copy floppy disks as long as you had two floppy disk drives and the appropriate software to do that and a copy of the game and a blank disk. You could copy the games over. And so my dad had gotten this exact copy, uh, which I believe that is my dad's handwriting on that little label that's on there. Uh, he got this version copied from someone else, either one of my uncles, because uh, a couple of them had a Commodore uh, that I remember, or someone through my dad's work or somebody he knew that had one. He got a copy of it, and this is the version I remember playing. Um, and it holds a lot of memories for me, not only because of myself playing the game, but this is also one of, if not the most played game that my dad would play on the Commodore. Uh, that, and then he had a few other ones called like Ace of Aces, um, and is it, oh, I forget what it is, Not Forbidden Planet, that's the movie, but something Planet uh, and all that, and a few other little games, but Pirates was about the, the most common game he would play. And so I have a lot of memories of sitting at our old house that I talked about in my previous videos, watching my dad play on the Commodore, the old Commodore system, playing this Pirates game, and watching him, you know, sail the ships and get into the sword fights and, you know, get into the uh, cannon battles with the ships on these old, like, sprite graphics and everything. 
And I can remember those animations of like the sword fights where you would hit the guy and then he'd, if you'd win the fight, he'd go to his knees and raise his sword up over his head. And when you would hit him, the body would turn red to show that you hit him with the sword. And, you know, you could see the little lines across the ocean and the uh, wind and the little cannonballs shooting out of the ships and different things. And I remember my dad playing that quite a bit. And it was kind of too advanced for me when I first started playing on the Commodore. Uh, because it was a role-playing game, there was a lot of text-based stuff and other elements that were just too advanced for me uh, at that point in time. So I was more into the just easy kind of games. And I'll probably talk about a few more of those later on down the line in this series. Um, but my dad played this a lot. And then as I got older into my later childhood and then, you know, like preteen, teenage years... I started playing this on the Commodore. And what had happened, as a side note, we ended up getting like a Windows 95 computer and I ended up getting more advanced gaming systems over, like I said, my later childhood and different things. But I had this like resurgence in my preteen and early teenage years of wanting to play on the Commodore. And our old Commodore system that we brought with us when we moved from our old house into the house that my parents still live in, we put that Commodore system out in a storage shed in our backyard, just in a bunch of boxes uh, with the monitor and the actual components for the system, the joysticks, all the games and all this stuff. And it was just sitting out there for like a couple of years. And then I finally saw it out there one day. I was getting like stuff to play in the yard, you know, like we had a thing of like footballs and basketballs and frisbees and stuff out there. And I saw the box of the computer components in there. And I asked my mom and dad, like, hey, do you care if I clean off some space in my room and, you know, kind of set it up on, I had a little desk that I would do homework on in there. And I said, like, could I bring this in, you know, and my dad was like, yeah, that's fine. My mom was like, yeah, as long as you you know, clean up the space and make sure it's, you know, you have room for it. Yeah, go ahead. You know, it's just sitting out here. And I had this resurgence of wanting to play these old Commodore games. And I played, you know, the more childish ones that I remember growing up. But the big one I really wanted to play was Pirates because I remember my dad playing it. And I played that quite a bit. And I, you know, found all the more little intricate uh, parts of the game that I didn't really pick up on when I was younger. You know, the trading and the sneaking into towns and the, like, uh, getting contracts to sink enemy ships depending what nation you were on and catching and killing pirates and looting, you know, other nations, uh, treasure galleons and warships and selling, you know, the gold and dividing the plunder and getting your crew and doing all this stuff and you know, if you became a reputable pirate, you'd try and sail into ports and they would, you know, fight with you and all this sort of stuff. And it was a lot more intricate than just the few little memories I had of my dad playing it growing up. And I really enjoyed it. And I got to see some of my dad's progress because a lot of these Commodore games, the memory was saved on the floppy disk. So unless you deleted a save file that was on there or you ran out of space and it had to overwrite one that was on there you could see previous progress. And so I could see my dad's old characters from, you know, at that point would have been like 10 to 15 years ago, uh, where now it would have been like 30 years ago. But I got to see my dad's characters and progress and things he did on there. And I found this weird connection between me and my dad over this game, you know, and then I would talk to him about it and he'd have kind of these flashback memories of stuff about it and tell me, oh, you should do this and you should do that. And it was kind of cool. And so that was on this Commodore thing. And then I kind of went through that phase of the Commodore for a while. And then it kind of went back into storage because I, obviously you couldn't get new games for it because it had been out of, you know, print and out of uh, service and all that stuff for years at that point. And the internet was still kind of a new thing. And even though you probably could find stuff like this maybe on the old kind of origin days of eBay, my parents sure surely weren't going to let me get on there and try and buy stuff online at that point. So I was basically stuck with the games that my dad had, and I had kind of played through everything I wanted to play in the collection, and 
kind of got bored with it. So it all kind of went back into storage and it sat out there, you know, for years and years. And it may actually still be out there to this day. I've never actually gone to look, although I've thought about it. And what happened was I got into like playing PlayStation, PlayStation 2, then the original Xbox, which leads me to this game right here, which is Sid Meier's Pirates, but this is in the early 2000s on the Xbox. And up by where I lived in Chicago, it's out of business now, it's been out of business for over 10 years, if not longer, we had a Game Crazy, which was connected to Hollywood Video, uh, which was the closest rental place to where we lived at the time. Uh, so when we would rent movies and things during that time period, the early to mid-2000s, we would go to Game Crazy. And I uh, had a membership with them, you know, a trade-in program where I'd get extra credit and things when you would trade games in and whatever, like how GameStop and different places have. And I remember going in there with my dad and seeing on the shelf, because they would have, you know, PlayStation over here and Xbox here and, you know, the different uh, Game Boy or, you know, whatever, PSP or whatever the system was, all in different areas, like how a GameStop is set up. And we were looking through the Xbox section because that's what I had at the time. I had traded in my PlayStation and everything and I, I was onto Xbox. And my dad saw this game on the shelf. And he looked at it and he goes, oh my God. And I go, what? He goes, I think this is the same game that we played on the Commodore. And I said, really? You know, and at the time, you know, this is like, I think like, let me look. I think it's like 2003 on here. Uh, da, 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 2005. Okay, so I would have been uh, my senior year in high school. And I go, oh, really? My dad goes, oh, yeah, I think this is that same game. Like, this is really weird. And so I grabbed the box and looked at it. And I was like, you know what? I think this is the same game. And my dad's like, all right, let's buy it. And we bought that game. And the reason I have so many memories, not only of the actual gameplay and things, what this did is this started what I consider one of the great bonding periods of the time of my like teenage years with my dad and we had like bonded over a lot of stuff it's not like my dad was an absentee father or anything but we had our things like we'd go fishing and we'd watch sports together you know and things but he never really seemed to get into video games outside of little glimpses here and there with the commodore stuff once we kind of got past commodore into like home video game consoles my dad kind of dipped out from that. He, he seemed like it was a little too beyond him to get into that. But this game right here ushered in my dad starting to play on an Xbox because of this game. Because my dad knew about the Commodore game. He had played it so much that he wanted to play this one. And he, uh, you know, was so, like, wanting to play this game. And so... We got it home, we fired it up, and immediately, even though the graphics were different and updated for the time, and the gaming system was a little bit different because it was made for an Xbox controller and not the old joystick-style controller and keyboard of the old Commodore, uh, but the essential core mechanics and gameplay of this game is virtually identical. To the Commodore one. So for my dad, who had never picked up an Xbox controller, never picked up a PlayStation controller, never picked up like a Sega Genesis controller or, you know, Nintendo controller, picked up an Xbox controller, and once I kind of showed him where the button layouts and stuff were, my dad was able to just, just like that, write in and play this game. Like he had never missed a beat from playing on the Commodore. And... That ushered in, like I said, this whole new bonding experience of me and my dad because we could play this game. Now, you couldn't play two-player, like, co-op on it. It was a single-player game uh, for the most part. You could play on, like, Xbox Live, but we didn't have two Xboxes and we didn't really have any internet to speak of that would have been quality enough uh, to play like that. But, you know, it was mainly a single-player single, single player game, so... My dad would create a character, and I would create a character, and I would play 
you know, after school and on weekends when my dad was at work. And then when he would come home after dinner or whatever, he would play and I'd be able to help him out and he'd help me out. And the experiences would be similar, but still kind of different because you had your own characters. But it ushered in this whole thing because me and my dad could bond over this game and over the Xbox and, you know, bring us closer together to spend time there in my in my bedroom, on my TV, on my Xbox, playing this stuff, you know, periods at a time. And it ushered in, like I said, this whole bonding thing and this new experience for my dad that will lead into other videos on some of these other games I've got on my rack here of basically a two-year kind of period from the beginning of my senior year or that summer before my senior year through my senior year into the summer before I ended up going to college of me and my dad playing games on the original Xbox together. And it all started with this game. And so I have a lot of memories and nostalgia built up with this game, specifically this Xbox One here. And this is not the original copy. I ended up selling that original copy with that original Xbox years ago when I wanted to upgrade to a 360. Uh, but I ended up finding this at uh, a thrift store years later, and which I've had it for probably close to 10 years now. But I found it. I didn't even have an original Xbox at the time, but I found it and I bought it just because of the memories I had with my dad on there. And I still play the game to this day. Uh, I pop it in every now and then because it's easy to just get into and goof around with for a while and different things. But ultimately, the thing that's kept me with this game and why this one, uh, you know, specifically holds so much value to me is because of the connection it helped me build with my dad to bridge that gap on video games from playing on the Commodore when I was little into my late, you know, teenage years into my adult life. And that was all because of this game right here. So... Um, that's kind of going to be it on, on this sort of stuff. Uh, I mean, it is a great game. If you've never played it, you can get it on Steam for like 10 bucks. You can find these used uh, all over the place. This is backwards compatible on the newer Xbox systems. Uh, if you have an Xbox One or uh, Series X that can play a disc, uh, you can also buy it on the Microsoft Store. I think it's like $10. Well worth it. I mean, you're not going to get like hundreds of hours of gameplay. It's not like a Skyrim or, you know, some crazy RPG game. But it is fun, and it's my favorite pirate game <laughs> that I've ever played. And it all stems from those early memories through uh, my my teenage years. But it's definitely worth it. If you can find this, you know, somewhere, and you have a Xbox, or like I said, you can get it on Steam, uh, definitely worth picking up for a couple dollars and playing it. It's fun if you've never never done that. Uh, so anyway, so that's going to kind of wrap up the video here. Um, as I always do, I just want to say thanks to everybody who's watched and, uh, you know, liked and subscribed to my channel. I, I greatly appreciate it. I've said it in a couple videos now. I, I'm, you know, really shocked by the level of support just with the number of views. I know my one home theater tour is over 500 views already, <laughs> and that is insane to me that... One of my videos would reach that level of views in like a month. I that, That's just crazy to me. Um, but yeah, so everyone who's who's watched these videos and subscribed or left a like on there, I, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, like I said, this is going to start kind of a trend of a couple games, uh, which I might do next and just do them all at once and, and, and do them here kind of in a series. Uh, but it starts a pattern of a couple games that I consider the kind of premier time in my life where I played modern video games with my dad. And it all started from this game right here. So uh, look for those videos coming out after this. And uh, like I said, I appreciate everyone who's watching and everything here. So uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.